Today's lesson is about planned comparisons. So I mentioned planned comparisons in my mini video about um, a priori and a posteriori tests and what kind of comparison is a planned comparison. It's obviously one that you've thought about beforehand, so this is an a priori kind of test. And the reason for using it is that um, we want to uh, maximize the number of comparisons we can make without having to adjust our alpha. And so uh, it has advantages at certain times. We are also going to use it, by the way, to introduce um, multi-way analysis of variance, particularly two-way analysis of variance. I've found it's just a really nice uh, intuitive way to understand um, non-additivity and interaction. So um, we need to understand the rules for making planned comparisons in order to carry them out. Rule number one, very simple, the degrees of freedom uh, of all the tests, in other words, when we add up all the degrees of freedom of all the tests we want to make, it has to be less than or equal to a minus one. So for example, if we have five different groups, there's, you, you know that we could make, what, five times four divided by two, 10 different tests. But we can't do any more than four, five minus four, five minus one, or four independent comparisons. Because as you can imagine, a lot of comparisons that we would make wouldn't be independent of each other, right? Compare group A to group B and A to group C, those are going to be uh, non-orthogonal. Um, okay, uh, potentially. All right, so uh, I'll, I'll illustrate non-orthogonality here in a minute. Um, let's uh, move on to the next one. So the next one basically is that these comparisons that you're going to make, these multiple comparisons, are going to be independent of one another. Um, and that's what's illustrated by the hand here. Um, the distance along the y-axis, along the distance along the x-axis and z-axis are independent of one another. And that's because they are perpendicular, uh, these axes, to one another. So if you go out along one, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going out along another. And in the same sense, um, the different contrasts you make, make uh, between groups um, won't depend upon each other. They won't be, you could think of it as correlated, I suppose. Um, so let's, let's illustrate what we mean by this. So let's, let's use a... Keep it simple, stupid data set. Let me start over here. I'm going to put this up at the top so we can work with this for a while. So you can kind of see it. So our keep it simple, stupid data set, um, we have uh, a control group. We have a group that we've added uh, fructose to uh, in the medium, say a growth medium. And then we've added sucrose to another growth, growth medium. And we've measured you know, some y variable on these, for example, p stem segment growth. So we've excised some P stem segments and we place them on a growth medium. It's a control plus fructose plus sucrose. So these are energy sources, uh, different forms of sugar. And um, one could imagine, for example, that we have made stem segment observations on these and they turn out like this. Okay. Here's our data set. We have an n of two per group of all these three groups. Um, we have um, uh, six observations that we've made. A equals three. Um, so, so we have A equals three groups in this particular, you know, if we just did the one way A nova, we would find we have three groups. Okay, so um, our rules are degrees of freedom less than three minus two in this case, so we can only make two orthogonal comparisons. We couldn't make three comparisons, which means in this case, we couldn't make all three. We couldn't say control versus fructose, control versus sucrose, fructose versus sucrose. Those wouldn't be independent of one another. They would each contain information that might uh, alter uh, or would, would not be orthogonal. So um, how do we determine this orthogonality? You can imagine we have way more than that, four or five groups, and we could ask all kinds of questions, and um, it would be tricky to know whether we have orthogonality. For example, um, let's look at this and form this into two logical questions. Um, 
one logical question we might ask after performing our ANOVA is our controls uh, different from uh, the plus sugar group. In other words, all four of these. And then we might logically ask, uh, is the effect of fru fructose different from the effect of sucrose? So these are questions. A posteriori questions they sound like, but uh, actually these are questions that we would plan beforehand <clears throat> to, to ask. And so we want to compare these two observations to these four, and then we want to compare these two to these two. And our question is, um, are these contrasts that we would want to make orthogonal? And so we need a rule. And the rule for orthogonality is, or the test, I, I should call it a test, I suppose, for orthogonality, is that the summation over all the groups from 1 to A, we have three, three groups here, uh, of, well, it depends on the comparison, because we, we have two groups here, we have control versus sugar, and we have um, uh, fructose versus sugar. So we just have two groups in this case that we're comparing in each contrast. And the summation of N sub I uh, C I J C I K has to equal zero for orthogonality uh, to to hold. Um. So, what are these things? First of all, n sub i is the number of individuals in group i. So for example, if the controls were group one and the sugars were group two, I would have uh, N1 would be two, N2 would be four, right? Okay, and um, then uh, I is just referring to the group. Uh, J is contrast one. K is contrast two. So this is, we're going to label contrast one, and this is contrast two. By the way, we always um, look at contrast pairwise. So if we had more than this, if we had like three or four questions, and we were um, interested in asking all those questions, um, we would look at a pair at a time. Because we can only tell whether contrast one and contrast two are orthogonal to each other with this test. So we're looking at pairs. So J is contrast one, K is contrast two. So the real mystery is, what is this C? Uh, I like to think of C as an index that we're going to use. And, um, <clears throat> The uh, absolute value of C equals the number of groups in the contrasted set. And here's where our keep it simple stupid example will be really nice to work with. So um, let's see. So let's take, uh, for example, our first question here. Uh, our control is different from sugars. Uh, then C11. So this is referring to the control group. And this is referring to contrast one where we're asking our controls different from sugar um, is 
2. <laughs> Why is that? Because um, that's the number of groups in the contrasted set. So when I look up here at the controls, I'm contrasting them with two groups together, fructose and sucrose. And um, so if I want to look at C21 and and so this is group two. Um, what is that? It's minus one. Um, now, why minus? Because it's the absolute value it has to equal that. Well, the sum of the C's uh, within a contrast within a contrast has to equal zero. And, and I mean, that's just the rule for setting up this index. So, and then we have group three, um, the number in the contrasted set is, is one. So in other words, we only have one group that we're comparing the fructose to and the sucrose to, okay, so it's group three here, all having to do with contrast one. Okay, so this is contrast one. So think about that a little bit. Here, we, you know, these numbers are arbitrary. I could have minus two and I could have uh, plus one and plus one, but they have to add to zero. And so I like to think of it as the number in the contrasted set. By the way, when you do this in jump, um, and jump can do these orthogonal contrasts, when you, uh, you choose these groups that you're contrasting by clicking on them, and when you do that, um, it will change the first one to one, and then if we choose two other groups to contrast it with, it will make those 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5 <laughs> each. Okay, so it doesn't really matter um, it, everything just has to be proportional. You have to have them summing um, to zero in the end. Um, but when you define it this way, the number of groups in the contrasted set, you would have it as two, minus one, and minus one, or you'd have minus two, plus one, plus one, whichever way around you start. All right. Um, okay, so um, notice uh, for this then that we, you know, when you add all these up, the summation of these C's is zero within this <coughs> contrast one. All right. Um, all right. So our next one, contrast two. Let's figure out um, the CI. So you have everything down there. You might want to stop the video if you don't, but I'm going to move along. All right. So with contrast two. We have the C's for contrast one. For contrast two, um, when we look at C12, remember what this is. This is the control group, and this is contrast two. What do you think is the number of uh, groups in the contrasted group? Um, look at contrast two. It's a contrast between fructose and sucrose. It doesn't involve the control. So the, this is uninvolved, so we give it a zero. But when we're comparing sucrose and fructose, C22 and C32, um, right? Because what this is, is this is plus fructose. This is plus sucrose, all for contrast two, okay? Um, what do we choose? How many are in the contrasted group with fructose? Plus one. And we know it has to be opposite in sign because it has to add to zero. The summation of the C's within the group has to be zero, so this has to be minus one. We could put minus one half, minus one half, minus two, plus two, I mean, plus one half, minus one half. It just needs to add up to zero, okay? All right, now, let's do our test. Uh, our test is the summation of N sub I, C, I, J, C, I, k equals zero. So let's write this out. So we have n, as, as we go, i equals one to a, right? Um, so we have n1, c11, c12, 
see if we did that right. So I, and we have IJ, so first contrast times C of the second contrast, having the same initial I. Now we step to I equals two, so we're gonna add N2, C21, C22, right? And then we're going to have um, N3, C31, and C32. I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I get this out. That's correct. Okay, so now we have all our numbers. So we have an N of 2 in each of our groups. We have 2 times, remember what C11 was? It was 2 times C12. We get that from here. That's 0 plus number in group 2, 2 times C21. Remember what that was? It was minus 1 times C22. That's here. Uh, plus 1. All right. Plus and three, the number of group three is two, and so we have C31, remember what that was? Minus one, uh, and C32, which is right up here, minus one. Okay, so we multiply all this out and we get zero, and we get minus two, minus one times one, and we get plus two, and lo and behold, our summation here does satisfy this. So we put a check mark on this. What it means is that now that we've calculated this, our two contrasts, so our conclusion is our two contrasts that we are planning to make are orthogonal. Now it may have seemed obvious to you that these are orthogonal because, you know, the f if, we're, if we're looking at control versus fructose, versus sucrose. We can see that when we compare this to these, that will be independent of the comparison of those two. Remember, this is our contrast one, and this is our contrast two. Um, so we could probably see that. We, would, we wouldn't probably do the test, although um, we would wanna know how to set it up and jump, and I will go over that in class. Um, but in more complicated cases, it's not so obvious. And so we want to calculate these coefficients and actually confirm the orthogonality of our different contrasts. And we remember what we do, we do it by pairs um, and that allows us to tell whether um, these are in fact um, independent contrasts. All right, so these are orthogonal and we can perform these contrasts and we can keep alpha at whatever our level is, and we won't have to adjust it for the fact that we're making more than one contrast. All right, that's great. So it gives us a little more statistical power. We're, um, we're not corrupting our significance level when we do multiple tests, as long as they're planned comparisons and they're orthogonal. And this little video provides you with the test. Very cool.